People spend seven to eight years studying to become a doctor, but the problem is most people don't actually know what it's like when you get there. Being a doctor is an incredible career, but there are plenty of things that they don't tell you. There are some serious misconceptions and stereotypes and other taboo subjects that people just don't think about or talk about when considering a life in medicine. My name's Adam, I'm a junior doctor from Australia. It's my second year working as a doctor this year and I'm currently rotating through the ICU. It's my day off today, so I thought I'd take the time to talk a little bit about some of the things that I wish people had told me when I was contemplating a career in medicine. Look, there are many preconceived ideas about what a career in medicine actually looks like, but I think it's many of these reasons that often drive people down the wrong path either towards medicine or away from medicine for the wrong reasons. So let's talk about what it's actually like having a career as a doctor. Bright and early day, time to be a doctor. I just got to the hospital and I'm excited to bring you with me today. What does the career actually look like? What does it feel like? Because it's something that's really difficult to grasp or understand before you actually start working as a doctor, let alone before you even start medical school. And frankly, my answer is gonna change dramatically from someone you know who's been a doctor for 10, 20, 30 years and is at a different stage in their career than I am two years out. Starting with medical school, I remember what people thought. The long hours, many years of study, countless exams, needing to know all of this knowledge in your head to set you up to become a doctor for the rest of your career. But let me tell you, it is not at all like that. Firstly, this misconception that you have no spare time, you're a shell of a human for the four to six years that you might be studying is just completely false. Each medical student is completely different and everyone will approach things differently, but it is just not sustainable to be able to study like that and no medical student does. And I definitely think there's this image attached to medicine whereby people might think like, okay, I don't fit into this mold of what a medical student is made to look like. Firstly, I'll say that yes, I think medical school is a challenging and competitive degree to get into, but I think mostly that's due to supply and demand in the sense that lots of people are vying for spots into medicine and there's only a certain amount of university spots to study medicine. So therefore it becomes competitive and medical schools and universities have to have these kind of competitive criteria, right? Once you get into medical school, you realize that yes, some of the concepts can be really challenging and quite tricky to get your head around, but it's about the volume of knowledge that you need to kind of wrap your head around more so than the individual topics and the difficulty themselves. So don't rule yourself out if you kind of have this idea that all medical students just you know, need to study all the time because that's not the case at all. Medical school is made up of a diverse group of people like any other setting really. And I think that's what makes medicine so interesting. Everyone brings a different skill set to the table and can do really cool things in different ways. One of the other big misconceptions about medical school is the length of study. And people see the commitment to medical school and to becoming a doctor as being, you know, five, to eight to 10 plus years and they think that is just outrageous. But the reality is it's longer. <laughs> um, I think people think like you get into medical school, you do your time, whether it be four, five, six, eight years, including your undergrad degree. And they think, okay, then they're a doctor, that's it. They're a specialist and you know they can go on their way and start practicing medicine and be the kind of doctor that I see in a clinic if I need to see a doctor. But the reality is that once you finish those years in medical school, there's a hell of a lot longer to go. <laughs> Look, there is an element of beauty to that in the sense that the learning doesn't stop and realizing that there will always be another thing for you to try and vie for or to get into and another hurdle along the way. The road to becoming a so-called specialist can actually take a lot longer than you might think. But yes, I can tell you that when you're in medical school and it's four or five years down the track, sure, people might be thinking, okay, it'd be great if I was working by now and I was, but honestly, the time absolutely flies. And I think that people have this idea that medicine is just the career that goes on forever. And yes, there's an element of truth to that. You're constantly learning, you're constantly studying. And I really think that if medicine is something that you wanna get into, that shouldn't be a barrier. Okay, next misconception, and this kind of links to what I said before. People think that you come into medical school on the first day and you leave having absolutely all of the answers and knowing exactly the kind of things you need to know to be a specialist in a particular area or to be you know, a GP or to be anything, right? And that's just not the, not the case at all. Your time in medical school really is to try and get as much exposure and understanding of what being a doctor is like, of different specialties, and really cover the broad strokes of what medicine is. And in saying that, when you come out as a junior doctor and start your first day of work, there is absolutely no expectation that you should know all the answers to everything. The main expectation is that you come out being a safe junior doctor. Bottom line is, when it comes to approaching medical school, break the stereotype, break the mold. Don't feel like you have to be like every other single medical student, but at the end of the day, it's hard to have all of those answers without going through it yourself.
So what would I say to someone considering a career in medicine about working as a doctor, considering, you know, I've only worked as a doctor for basically two years now. But I think first of all, we'll start with the misconception that doctors don't have a sense of work-life balance. And I think this idea comes from a sense of reality and the fact that doctors are work pretty hard and it doesn't matter where you go, but the hours can be a bit tricky working on weekends and not having time to see friends and family at times and having to sacrifice in certain periods of your life. And this is definitely the case in a lot of places still, but I will say that I think there's a little bit more attention being given towards it now. And I think it is starting to change for the better. But having said that, I just don't think it's true that doctors don't have any sort of work-life balance at all, because in any profession, you do need some sense of work-life balance to be able to sustain a career in the long term. Plenty of people I know, including myself, have lots of hobbies outside of work and we have lives outside of work. So it's not only a reality, it's you know absolutely essential for longevity and to maintain some sense of sanity in the long term. Another con perhaps is that you don't necessarily always get to choose your roster and if you're going into medicine expecting that you can A have a nine to five and B be able to have you know complete control over your hours, I think that you will be probably disappointed. But I will say that the pros are that as you do get more senior, you do have a little bit more control over how many hours you work and that sort of thing. The hours definitely do get better. And even as a junior, you do still have plenty of time to do things that you want to do. Another huge misconception is what the job actually looks like. And I think this is perpetuated by many hours of television that kind of depict doctors in a certain way and depict what the hospital environment's like in a certain way. And you know, they capture the drama. That's what that's what it's all about. So not every day is gonna look like what you see on TV, and maybe that's an obvious statement, but I think there is this idea that you're having a huge amount of impact in you know every single interaction you have with the patient and that you're saving countless lives a day. You're cracking open chests on the ED floor, but the reality is that it's not like this. And especially as a junior, you know, there's a lot of grunt work that you have to do, a lot of learning the ropes of what it's like to work in a hospital. And as you get more senior, you do have more responsibility, which is cool. But what I will say is that when you're a junior doctor and a medical student, there is this cloud of imposter syndrome that often hangs around for many people. And I think that it's brought about by a couple things. Firstly, the culture of medicine in that we all expect perfection of ourselves and the type of people that come into medicine uh, often people that are perfectionists and expect very high things of themselves. And so it's normal to kind of have this idea that, you know, you can't make any mistakes or you're not smart enough to be there or you need to know everything. And the reality is that's just not true. But please try not to give in to the anxiety and the hype of your colleagues. And because I promise you the expectation in your head is much bigger than the expectation of those around you. And I can definitely tell you from personal experience that imposter syndrome was a huge thing for me in medical school. I don't think I necessarily felt like I didn't belong or that I didn't deserve to be there, but I definitely felt that there were people around me that were so much smarter than me, that knew so much more than me, and that, and at times I didn't feel like I was maybe good enough. So maybe use that as motivation, but don't let that dictate your identity as a medical student or as a person. The other thing about working in a hospital, particularly when you're junior, is, you know, maybe surprisingly, the sense of camaraderie. It's an uncommon perception of working as a doctor, but you're going to be working with, you know, a lot of people who are pretty young, around the same age as you, in a workplace where people are constantly learning and experiencing things for the first time and seeing some really, you know, crazy things that you wouldn't, you know, expect to see in an perhaps more ordinary workplace. And being in a hospital is a team environment, as cliche as it sounds, because you're constantly working with other people and making decisions together. So let's talk about what it's actually like having a career as a doctor. Like, what does the career itself actually look like five, 10, 15 years from now? Because it's not something that medical students or even people considering getting into medicine often think about. They don't think about what the career feels like, as I mentioned before. And they don't think about what their career is gonna look like maybe in 20 years, aside from the idea that they have in their head. And that's really difficult to predict because you could say that about any career really. And my answer, working two years as a doctor, is gonna differ completely from someone who's been a doctor for 30 years. But I will say that long-term career goals, they definitely change. A lot of people who think you know, they know what they wanna do when they get to the other end of medical school will end up doing a complete backflip and doing something completely different. I can say that that was definitely the case for me. People came into medical school on day one with an idea of maybe what they wanted to do once they became doctors. And when they graduated, that was something completely different. Day one of medical school, I thought I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon and 
Now I don't want to be an orthopedic surgeon, so things change and I think it's important to understand that your idea of medicine and what the career looks like probably shouldn't be tethered too tightly to one you know, area of medicine or one idea of what that career of medicine might look like because inevitably it's gonna change. But I will say that your understanding of what medicine is as a career, if you haven't already started working as a doctor, is probably still developing. And even for me, it's still developing. And that kind of leads into this idea that, you know, you have one career pathway as a doctor and that's to get to X specialty. Once you reach that specialty, you'll be doing that sort of continuously for the rest of your life. And I think what people don't understand enough is that, you know, medicine has lots of different trajectories, more so than you would think. I've seen people that have changed their career completely even after they've specialized or even on the way to specialization because medicine just offers such a breadth of career opportunity. It has so many transferable skills that maybe people probably don't realize enough from the outset. And I don't think that's kind of discussed enough with medical students, this idea of career exploration and kind of what to do and how to approach this challenge of what I want to do within medicine. And the other thing to think about with that is money. At the end of the day, medicine is a job. You go to work, you come home, you expect to get paid. And I think that it's definitely a taboo subject within medicine to kind of talk about money. And people don't talk about it enough, but definitely outside of medicine, people probably talk about it too much, you know, how much doctors get paid and that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, if you're considering medicine as a career, think about it a little bit because firstly, it shouldn't be the driving motivating factor for you to want to do medicine. People often say that there are plenty of other things that you can do where you'll earn much more than you can as a doctor by working much less or perhaps with much less stress. And that's probably all I'll touch on about money. But in terms of the next point, what are you actually gonna do with your newly minted medical degree that's hanging up on the wall in a frame? What career choices do you have as a doctor at the end of the day? And it might be more than you realize because even you know when you're working as a doctor, there are so many transferable skills kind of utilized in other areas whether that be within health or outside of health, whether clinically or not clinically. The classic answer to the question, why do I want to become a doctor is because I want to help people. And at the end of the day, that's true for probably most people, hopefully most people that enter medicine. But one of the great things about medicine is that you really have the opportunity to make an impact on both an individual level, helping out the patient that's sitting across from you. And what I really believe is that doctors have the skill set and a passion for medicine and for health that they can really impart you know, on a global scale. Medicine offers so many amazing opportunities, whether you seek them out intentionally or whether they just happen to come across as spontaneous, serendipitous opportunities. But as doctors, we really have the ability to do so much good and do some really cool things. And so I will say at the end of the day that I've really enjoyed my last two years as a doctor and I think it's created some amazing moments and experiences that I will never forget. And I hope if you're someone that wants to get into medicine that you get to experience that too. But ultimately, I hope that this video kind of gave you a bit of a different perspective about what medicine is as a career, as a job, and that it helps build your perception of what medicine is before jumping down that rabbit hole of applying to medical school, starting for exams, you know, all that fun stuff. <laughs> But if you have any thoughts on any of that stuff, if you're looking to apply to medicine, if you're in medical school or a doctor yourself, drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. But until next time, that's it, and I'll see you very soon.